ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده واشهد ان محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر ولله الحمد الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر my beloved brothers and sisters today is the day of eid Today is the day when we are asked by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to eat and drink and to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Today is the day of dua. It is a day of zikr, of remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for whom we can never thank enough. Today is a day of forgiveness where we clean our hearts of anyone that we may not have forgiven that we will go to them and say i forgive you today is a day of obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a day of gratitude of giving thanks for all that allah has done for us and given us we take today and we say thank you O oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and most importantly today is yawm al nahr the day of sacrifice in which we sacrifice to show our Lord our commitment to him over the last nine days we have tried the best we can by our commitment and our sacrifices and our doing of extra ibadah of good deeds of seeking dua and forgiveness from Allah in the last nine days we have tried to demonstrate to Allah that we believe that we have Iman that we are people of faith that we have listened and we have accepted the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that we are striving oh Allah to do the best we can within the limitations of our intelligence and our circumstances oh Allah we're striving and we know we will not do everything perfect that we will make mistakes and oh Allah, we implore you to forgive us when we do fall short. Today is the day we get to celebrate and to see how Iman is operationalized in the life of a believer and his family. Today is the day when we get to remember Ibrahim السلام, and his family. Ibrahim السلام, this person who Allah said, he is Khalilullah, the friend of Allah. You and I have friends. But when Allah is your friend, when Allah says, Ibrahim is my friend, السلام, that is something that your mind cannot even fathom. Ibrahim السلام, reached the status because of his effort and his striving and his demonstration of faith and shows us what submission to Allah really means. From a very young boy, he started off in bad shape. His father used to manufacture the idols for the people to worship. You're growing in a household in which this is the business that your father has. It's like today, like a drug dealer. You're growing home in the home of a, of a parent who is like a gangster or a drug dealer. And Ibrahim السلام, looked around and saw his community so steeped in idol worship that even though he was young he decided to take matters in his own hands and to destroy their idols and confront them and to let the community know this cannot stand he did not accept the norms which was incorrect of his community but stood up and says i will be a beacon of truth and will speak out and when you do so those who you are trying to confront will always find a way to get rid of you so they decided to burn him alive 
And so they built a huge bonfire, placed this young man inside. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the fire. Ya nar kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, instead of burning and destroying, become cool and safe for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Fire burning all around him. And he's sitting in the middle of it, cool and safe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. And Ibrahim throughout his life, Allah tested him with everything, with kingdom root, with so many tests. And Ibrahim alayhi salam remained steadfast, saying, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen. That verily my prayers and my sacrifices, my living and my dying, O oh Allah, is all for you. The essence of submission. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa wa lam yakum min al mushrikeen. That verily Ibrahim alayhi salam was a nation unto himself. Obedient by nature, upright, and was not from among those who were the mushrikeen, the idol worshippers. Allah swore and testified to this man because of his struggle and effort. And Ibrahim salam became old and didn't have a child. And he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child. And then when he got very old, miracle happened. Hajar, his wife, give birth to a little boy. But that joy of having a little son was short-lived. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to take this wife and the son and put them in the desert and leave them. And so he took his son and, this, and his wife into the desert that had nothing. And left him and his wife said, what are you doing? You're leaving me here with this little child. And then when she realized it was Allah, he was commanded him to do this. Her heart was submissive and accepting this because she was a believer. And she was stood there making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save her and her son. But dua is not enough. She also made effort. And she began to run between Safa and Marwa to find water for her baby. And Allah blessed her with Zamzam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored that mother for her commitment and dedication or submission to the will of Allah in that millions every year go to Mecca and find that exact spot that she was left in and retrace her steps over and over as part of the ritual of Hajj. You talk about legacy, where millions will go there until the end of time and retrace the steps of that beautiful mother as a token of appreciation and understanding of her effort. And then when Ismail salam became of age, as Allah says, Ghulamun Halim, a nice young man. Allah did not leave Ibrahim salam alone. He tested him again. So Ibrahim goes to his son. Ya Bunayya, inni ara fil manam anni athbahuk, fanzur ma tara. What an extraordinary thing to say to a child. He says, oh my son, I have seen in a dream that Allah is commanding me to sacrifice you. How do you go to your child and say that to them? Your child will look at you and say, Mom, Dad has finally lost it. He's talking about God commanding him to sacrifice me. What is wrong with him? Did you give him his medication? Ismail alayhi salam was no ordinary son. He was raised by the best of the best, Ibrahim and Hajar. 
He had the etiquette and the understanding and the iman of a believer. He said to his father, Ya Abati, if al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabiri says, oh my father, because Ismail recognized that his father has been commanded by Allah to do this, but his father will not be able to do it unless he cooperates, unless he's willing to help his father. And so he turns to his father and says, look, you do what Allah has commanded you to do, oh my father. And I want you to know that I will try to be patient as you do this. Now, I will be there for you to help you facilitate this, even though it will cost me my life. That you will find me, oh dad, trying to be patient. And he says, inshallah, because he's not quite sure how he's gonna handle it. How much is going to help, you know, when that moment reaches. So he says, with the permission of Allah, with the will of Allah, I will try to be patient and to facilitate this obedience because I know we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we get to rehearse that story. And because of this family and what they have done and demonstrated how iman and submission works, every salah you make, we will mention the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Millions will pray five daily salah and remember this family and this man, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor this family. But the reality is that today, as we reflect on that family, it is to help us to understand what submission to Allah means. You see, when you become Muslim, we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some of us, we sometimes don't understand what I've just said. What you're saying is that, Oh Allah, you I recognize as my Lord, that you are one, and I'm giving you a blank check. Ask me anything, and I will do it. I will submit to you. Oh Allah, tell me what you need. And I will deliver as best as I can. Submission. This is the essence of Islam. That's what Muslim means. That's what Islam means. Submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how hard it gets. So when Allah says, you should pray your five daily salah, there's no second guessing. There's no us saying to Allah, are you sure about this? Do you see my schedule? How busy I am? You asking me to pray five daily salah? I have five kids. I have no time to sleep. Much less to pray. Submission means you will say, I will trust you Allah. I will do it anyway. There are often times in our faith when we don't understand why Allah is asking us to do something. Like a, a, a young sister sitting there and saying, why do I have to wear this piece of cloth? Why? It covers my beauty. But you say, I trust Allah. In the business world, you say, trust the process. We trust in Allah. That Allah who have created us knows our hearts. And so my brothers and sisters, we have got to start producing Ibrahim's husbands and fathers like this. Sons like Ismail and daughters and mothers like Haja. For the reality is, the Muslim Ummah is faced and confronted with so many challenges that has been presented to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we sit here enjoying this beautiful moment in this air-conditioned hall, outside in the world, poverty in the United States exists. Poverty is to work for just below $13,000 a year, 12,000 something. And there are 48 million Americans below the poverty line as we sit here. 
in the richest country in the world. As we sit here, COVID has already killed 600,000 people. With over 34 million infected in the United States. And Muslims sit back and say, should I take the vaccine? Subhanallah. Some of the scholars are saying, it is haram if you don't take the vaccine. Because you are endangering and affecting others around you. The evidence is too clear to sit on the fence regarding vaccine. Get with the program. Do not become gullible. And sit there as a Muslim. And don't understand the magnificence of protecting ourselves and protecting others around us. COVID didn't allow us to make Ramadan last year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this little bug. And I'm almost done. This little bug. To teach humanity who had become arrogant. Who had begun to disappear and deviate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah wanted to teach us humility. Sent a little bug that we cannot even see. And stop the world. Put all of us in our houses unable to come out. To let us and remind us of who is in charge. That Allah is still in charge of the planet. And the time much you think you are so powerful, Allah has shown us what He can do. As we sit here, climate change is beckoning us. Climate change is not something that is going to happen in the future. Climate change is happening now. As fires in California are burning and houses in Germany are being flooded and Belgium and all over the world. The climate is talking to us. You guys have got to do something. You're making the earth unlivable for humans. And there's only one end to that road. Where the planet will no longer be able to sustain humanity. As we sit here, atheism has taken hold of our communities and the world in the name of science. People are deserting Allah. People are setting up churches of devil worship. People are taking pride in following the devil. Who has taken a renewed position of prominence among the people of the world. As we sit here, racism continues to wage its scourge across the nations. In which people hate each other just because of the color of their skin. And we call ourselves the elevated humans, the intelligent ones, the highest of the species. And we don't tolerate each other because I don't like your skin color or the texture of your hair. That where we're headed. That I will be moved to such an extent that I will not only discriminate against you, I will seek to kill you because you're different. As we sit here, brothers, refugees are getting more and more. Turkey has the most refugees in the world. Almost four million refugees. Colombia is number two. With Venezuelans pouring in. There are only over 84 million refugees in the world and counted. And why does refugees come? Because people make war with each other for two reasons. I want power and I want your stuff. Two man-made problems that has created so much refugees. Half of which is children. And brothers and sisters, Islamophobia is not going away. The incidents in Canada and so many different places reminds us daily that people hate us. People don't understand who we are. They don't get that we are peaceful people, that we are part of the solution to the problems of the world. And so brothers and sisters, on this day of Eid, all of these problems are outside our doors. And who you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have assigned to deal with them? They are our problems. We are the ones Allah has assigned 
to deal with the problems of the world, the Muslims. And so on this day of Eid, as we relish and wonder, in wonder at Ibrahim salam, I want each of us to ask ourselves, am I submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way it is? Am I treating my wife nice? Am I really praying my salah? Am I, when I go to my workplace, avoid cheating and lying and breaking my promises? Am I doing these things? Because that's the smallest of steps. We've got to recycle. We've got to get involved in all of these problems that are global and become actively and proactive in them. For that is the true meaning of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so on this day of Eid, as we celebrate and we eat and we make merriment and we embrace our brother and we forgive each other, and we spend time with our families, we must remind ourselves and internalize and audit ourselves and ask, how is my submission? How am I doing? Am I giving up too quickly? Am I allowing the shaitan to control me and make me obedient to, and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and allow us to be able to live in this dunya in such a way as to please him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire our young people to become future leaders of tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to develop a passion for goodness and a faith that will move mountains and a determination that will not allow us to sleep until we solve the problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause our families to become united and tight May Allah help husbands and wives who have issues to find ways to resolve them. May Allah help those parents who have children who are giving them a hard time to find ways to work and accommodate and to deal with them, inshallah. May Allah help us to be proud to be Muslims of Islam, of this guidance, of this special faith that Allah has gifted us, not because we strove or be found a way to have it Allah gift Islam to you and so we want to say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kula kawli haza wa astaghfili wa lakum alhamdulillah hibla alameen hamdan kasiran tayyiban barakun fi wa nashadu an la ilahi illallah wa ahda wa nashadu anna muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa qina azab al nar ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا نستغفر الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليك أو oh الله on this day of Eid oh Allah we ask you to give ease to those who are suffering in every part of the world oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask you to help those who are being persecuted oh Allah those refugees oh Allah those who can't find food oh Allah who are suffering from COVID we ask you to give relief from them oh Allah we ask you to let those who are persecuted have iman and increase their iman as a result of it and their determination to strive and struggle oh Allah we ask of you to forgive us our sins Oh Allah, we ask of you to give us goodness in this world. Oh Allah, we ask of you to protect our akhirah and allow us to occupy a high place in paradise. Oh Allah, we ask of you to teach us how to serve you, how to obey you. Oh Allah, we ask of you to forgive us when we fall short. Oh Allah, we ask of you to help and to protect the budding faith of those who are weak in Iman. Oh Allah, we ask of you to unite our communities and cause them to grow as oasis of goodness for humanity. Oh Allah, help us to develop the strength and courage to go out and to talk to those who don't have Islam. And to share the message of Islam to those who may not have heard it. Oh Allah, we ask of you to make us shining examples of righteousness and of righteous people. Oh Allah, help us and increase our knowledge of our faith. Oh Allah, we ask you to help those Muslims every part of the world that are suffering. Oh Allah, help us to deal with the challenges of all that we have mentioned, including climate change and others. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect for us our lives and our property and our children and our progeny and our deen. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to help us to use Ibrahim alayhi salam as a standard and a furqan of which we can 
emulate and try to pattern our lives after. And lastly, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look kindly upon us on the day of judgment when we will need the shade from you and we will need your mercy in order to enter the paradise, the ultimate prize for those who strive for your sake, insha'Allah. أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله ولكم السلام عليكم عيد مبارك to all of you.